You know, I love getting voicemails from people with their questions and situations and got a really good one from a lady named Michelle in South Carolina with uh, something I don't know an awful lot about, but I'm going to give my two cents worth. And uh, let's go ahead and play the voicemail message and then I'll let you know my thoughts. Hey, RV Wingman. This is Michelle Dobbles from South Carolina. And I have a question related not to the RVs itself, but camping itself. I'm finding it... Um, very, very hard. I have to make reservations to go anywhere. State parks, private. Um, I'm not a snowbird yet. I still got some about five years for that to do. But even just to go during spring break, Christmas break, um, the summer, I'm finding a year, a year and a half sometimes to make reservations, and it's very hard. So I'm looking into investing in a um, RV lot in Florida. I go to Florida a lot, and um, I want to know if it's the common, um, as far as buying RV, buy RV lots, um, I hear about deeded and not deeded. Uh, a lot of people are telling me most of the lots are at the RV parks, if they sell private, are um, like a lease, like a 99-year lease. I'll do that so I have a place to go um, and then just drive around to visit see. Um, what, is your, what is your take on the difference of buying an RV lot, deeded and not deeded? Do I get it that it's um, that you own it? But what is your take on that? Well, Michelle, thank you for your voicemail very much. I'm going to do my best to answer your question uh, from my perspective. I am not an expert on the topic that you are asking me about, but I am an expert at making mistakes. I'm an old guy, made a lot of mistakes. I like to own my mistakes and try to learn from them. So uh, the, the, the answer, the short answer is it depends. It depends. Personally, I like uh, to have a deeded piece of property rather than a lease. I mean, when I think about a lease, I see a timer, you know, like you turn a timer. And the moment you sign it, 99 year lease, 30 year, 50 year, it doesn't matter. As soon as you sign that lease, that timer's going tick, 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 tick. And the longer you've got it, the less time there is. And so in terms of selling the thing in the future, uh, I think that it would be easier to sell a deeded lot than it would be a, a, you know, a, a leased lot. I always lean towards being conservative, especially on a purchase like this, because it's a lot of money. You had mentioned early on in the phone call about it was hard to make a reservation uh, when you want to go to a campground in Florida. Who doesn't like going to Florida? I mean, right? So sometimes it takes a year, year and a half at a nice campground to make a reservation. That's because camping is popular as can be. RVing is popular. Florida is great. Is it going to always be as popular as RVing is today? I don't know. You said it's hard to make a reservation. How hard is it going to be to make payments on that piece of property for 15, 20 years or more? Just, just asking. I don't know. I don't know your situation, but difficulty, you know, it all depends on where you are. Maybe it's not a big deal financially for you, but for a lot of people, yeah, it's a pain. It is a pain and I don't see it getting a whole lot better especially in places that are in high demand like Florida. But which one would you rather have? The pain of trying to make a campground reservation or knowing, oh my God, I've got this financial debt that I'm saddled with for the next you know, umpteen years. That's just something I think that you ought to think about. The benefits, the benefits of uh, owning or leasing one of these sites are many. You can get on the internet, go to these forums, watch YouTube videos, and man, you can see all kinds of benefits, and there are. There's a lot of benefits. I think it's better to not just look at the benefits, but also look at the drawbacks. I see a lot of drawbacks. As an example, rules. The rules today, if you were to sign a document today, whatever campground or resort you're going to buy or lease, are those rules going to be the same of in five years, 10 years, 15 years? What if they change? I'm sure you will have to comply. What if you have a certain breed of dog and right now they allow that breed of dog? You're happy. But what if something happens in the campground and you're, I don't know, I'm not picking on a certain breed, but certain breeds do get picked on. And what if they say, you know what, we're going to change the rule and no longer can you have your fill in the blank, whatever breed of dog you've got. What about the rules if you want to sell or when you want to sell? If you have to make a quick sale on the property, something changes in your life, you're a, 
of you know financial condition, health, some family thing comes up, and you have to. So what do you have to do? Do you have to list it through the uh, owner, the people that own the property? And what happens if they sell the campground? If they sell the resort? Yes, the new the new owner should comply with what the people were doing that they bought it from, but will they? Will they maintain it to the standard that you're used to? That That's a question. I think it's a valid question, something that you need to think about. We all hope for the best, but you got to prepare for the worst. If and when you need to sell, how popular is RVing going to be at that time? I don't know either. Is it? I don't think it's going to be any more popular than it is right now. We are peaking and the real estate prices are peaking as well. When you sell that lot, what kind of competition are you going to have? What about, uh, you know, you're going to be tethered to that thing for a long, 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 long time. If you like to travel all over the country, yeah, you can rationalize and say, you know, I can come and go. And all that's true, it is. But that will present its own set of problems. You know, I, I say that, that we go around life going, if that one thing was fixed, our problems would go away. You will never get away from problems until you're like this, if you know what I'm talking about. You can win the lottery. You will have problems, a whole new set of problems that you don't even know about and probably can't imagine. If you buy one of these lots, you are tethered to it, and that's okay, as long as you understand what the commitment is. When you're trying to sell that thing, is the note going to be assumable? I don't know. Got to check the paperwork. Got to check what the rules are. Are they going to be able to sell it? Can you sell it individually? You might want to go right now, but you know, if you're thinking about doing this, and find somebody that has recently been in that campground and sold their site. They sold their site. Wonder why they sold their site. How long did it take them? Was there something that happened that motivated them to sell? What about people? You better like people. Florida ain't getting less crowded, honey. I'm telling you, Florida is getting more and more crowded. And if you're in a nice campground, a nice resort, the people that come in are going to be newbies, a lot of them, a lot of families. As a former campground owner, I would see people come in and they think that they are the only person in the world and they act like it. And you've got to deal with a whole lot of different people. If you're going to be there, if you're going to be seeing during the peak season, which is probably when you want to go during the winter time, you're going to be seeing a lot of other people and you better have a long fuse and be very, very patient. You know, you may want to ask yourself the question, um, where am I going to be in five years? Do I see myself here in five years? And if you can convince yourself that that's a yes, if you say, yeah, I'm going to be here in five years. Are you where you thought you were going to be five years ago right now? Most of us are not. Think about where you are today. Think about where you're going to go, or do you just want to go there? Life has a way of happening, and, and, and we have to deal with that. What about the HOA fees? What about residency requirements or taxes? What about all those things? I'm sure that you can get that information if you go online, but most of us, and I'm guilty of it too, if we, if we go, man, I'd love to go on that trip. Everything I see is going to be based upon through the prism of wanting to go on that trip. I want to buy that item. Everything I see is going to make me want to buy that computer or the TV or, man, I want to buy that. If you want to buy an RV lot, I'm telling you, your brain is going to convince you that that is the greatest thing that ever was. And it's going to take discipline to go, you know what? I want it. But I got to really find out if this is for me. One final suggestion. Besides taking other people's opinions, go online. There are some online forums, some excellent online forums that people talk about this very thing. Read what they have to say, not just all the positives, because the people that are saying positive things, most of them have only owned their site, or leased it, for five years or less, seven years or less. Try to find somebody that bought a site 10 years ago or longer and find out what they have to say, because they've got a perspective that the person's still on their honeymoon, they still love this, because we all do in the very beginning. You need to get the perspective of a lot of different people. Take your time. Um, for now, I would say do all that, and just the hard part about making reservations, deal with it. 
I know you don't want to. I wish there was an easy way. There are some ways you can find out, you know, watch some YouTube videos. But finding a good campsite during a peak time of year is not easy. And it, as I say, it ain't going to get any easier. So anyway, Michelle, thank you so much for, uh, for your voicemail message. I hope this helped. I'm not trying to be a downer. I am the RV wingman. A wingman, a good wingman looks out for you. And I want to look out for people, not just tell them all the rosy stuff. The rosy stuff's pretty easy to find. Like I said, your mind will convince you of all that great stuff. It's the other stuff that we don't want to hear. We don't even want to think about that we eventually will go, oh, why didn't I listen? I want to know what you think. Michelle, and if it's not Michelle, if you're watching this video, do you think I'm off my rocker? Was I too negative? What else did I not mention? I'm sure I didn't mention a whole lot of things that could be uh, drawbacks to owning your own RV lot. But um, I'd like to hear from you. Post your comments down below. If you have a question like Michelle did, you can either email it to me, the email address and the link is down below in the description. Also, my voicemail is down there. You can leave me a voicemail message 24 hours a day. I think you can leave up to a three minute voicemail message like Michelle did. She left a voicemail and I responded to it. I get to every single one of them as fast as I can. So thank you again. Thank you for watching. I am Alan Warren. They call me the RV wingman because that is what I do. I try to watch out for folks. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.